we already knew that the FBI was colluding with the big tech companies in violation of our First Amendment civil liberties, and a federal judge held them accountable for that. But we are now learning, thanks to a House Judiciary Committee report, that the FBI was also working with foreign intelligence to censor us. It wasn't just them on their own sending emails over to Zuckerberg's team and saying, can you delete this? It really offends our sensibilities about the pandemic or about the election or about Joe Biden. They're also taking orders, it sounds like, from Ukraine, working with their intelligence agencies. If you don't like the war, maybe the Ukrainian intelligence people will complain to our FBI and then our FBI will literally censor us. We're going to go through the full report and then we'll see what Jake Sullivan, our national security advisor, has to say about this. But this is the story over from the Judiciary Committee in conjunction with the Select Subcommittee on Weaponization of the Federal Government. You can see they titled this puppy, The FBI's Collaboration with a Compromised Ukrainian Intelligence Agency to Censor American Speech. Our intelligence agency, colluding with other intelligence agencies, to censor lawful First Amendment protected speech, to criticize a war, to criticize our elected officials. We're supposed to be allowed to do that. Coming out of the United States House of Representatives, they give us an executive summary here. Starting out with the quote from President Zelensky, July 17, 2022. They say, Zelensky said, such an array of crimes against the foundation of the state's national security and the links recorded between Ukrainian security forces and Russian special services raise very serious questions about their respective leaders. Such an array of crimes against the foundations of the state's national security and the links recorded between Ukrainian security forces and Russian special services raise very serious questions about their respective leaders. Interesting statement. So doubting Russian special services and Ukrainian security forces and the links between the two. The executive summary from Congress tells us the following about this collusion. And you can see this chain of connection here. They say the First Amendment to the Constitution is the bedrock of our system, guarantees at one time, every American the right to speak his or her mind freely and without government interference. It's predicated on the understanding that no government official has a monopoly on truth and that every American can decide for themselves. But on April 15th, as part of its investigation into the government's role on censoring lawful speech, the Judiciary Committee issued a subpoena to Facebook, Meta, the parent company of Facebook, Instagram, and to Alphabet, the parent company of Google and YouTube. Documents obtained in response to these subpoenas reveal that the FBI, on behalf of a compromised Ukrainian intelligence entity, requested and in some cases directed the world's largest social media platforms to censor Americans engaging in constitutionally protected speech online. We see here the chain of command. The FSB in Russia infiltrates Ukraine. The SBU. The FSB infiltrates, they say, the SBU. Then the SBU issues a takedown request to the FBI. And then the FBI sends the takedown request over to the social media platforms. And then the social media platforms remove it. Now, I've got a big question about this here. Whether the FSB is infiltrating Ukraine. What I expect is that Ukraine themselves are probably just saying, uh, we don't like this speech. FBI, can you please take it down for us? But this little excuse here is, you know, always blaming Russia for everything. So let's see what this says. I have a hard time believing that Russia is infiltrating Ukraine to ask the FBI to remove articles that are critical of Ukraine when they want those to exist. Anyways, let's see where this goes. Now, the committee's investigation has revealed that the FBI, the federal law enforcement agency responsible for disrupting foreign influence, facilitated censorship requests to the American social media companies on behalf of a Ukrainian intelligence agency that they say was Ill infiltrated by Russian aligned actors. Russian aligned actors infiltrated Ukraine. So in so doing, the FBI violated the First Amendment rights and potentially undermined our security. In light of well-documented instances of the FBI's civil liberty abuses, this new information raises grave concerns about the FBI and their credibility as a law enforcement organization. Let's see. Uh, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the security service of Ukraine, the SBU, sought to identify and impair suspected Russian influence operations on social media. That makes sense. Russia's out doing their thing. Ukraine's doing their thing. Fine. That's informational warfare. Perfectly fine. Stay out of our free speech. The SBU enlisted the FBI in support of this effort, transmitting the list to FBI list of social media accounts that allegedly, quote, spread Russian disinformation. The FBI, in turn, routinely relayed these lists to the relevant social media 
media companies, which distribute internally for enforcement. The graphic above illustrates the FBI's role and the SBU's censorship operation. The graphic illustrates the frequency which, which, with which the requests were sent by the FBI and the SBU to American social media companies. So you see the schedule here. <laughs> it's just great. Yeah, I mean, we've got what the invasions in February. So March 2022, Ukrainian intelligence. And I'm still trying to figure out this non sequitur here, right? Because this paragraph doesn't say anything about this, this censorship request coming from Russia. It's the SBU taking it on their own accord. So on Tuesday, they're like, oh, but we got bad posts on Google, Instagram, and Facebook. Delete those. Instagram on Wednesday. Uh, go back to Google. YouTube, big problems on the 11th, the 18th, the 25th. Those dang, you know, conservative commentators out there questioning the endless war. Get them on the 28th. Go after Twitter on the 27th. Facebook on the 22nd, the 29th. Censor, censor, censor. The committee's analysis of these disinformation registries revealed that the FBI, at the request of the SBU, flagged authentic accounts of Americans, including a verified U.S. State Department account and those belonging to American journos. FBI and the SBU repeatedly requested the removal and the suspension of authentic accounts, expressing unambiguously pro-Ukrainian views, as well as those voicing opposition to Russian President Putin, which is strange to me. Why would they request pro-Ukrainian views? Like, they're content neutral. I mean, really, they're removing both sides in that one request. At times, the FBI would even follow up with the relevant platform to ensure that the accounts were taken down. Regardless of its purpose, the FBI had no justification for censoring at all. Yeah, it doesn't really matter at all. Shouldn't have removed anything. So in July 2022, Zelensky fired the head of SBU, saying that the Russians infiltrated the SBU. Given that the SBU was compromised by a network of Russian collaborators, sympathizers, and double agents at the time is concerning. So the FBI cooperating with the SBU may have been actively working with the Russians. The inclusion of the American accounts on the SBU's list indicates the FBI neither either did not properly vet their requests or was aware of their domestic nature, nevertheless carried them out. Findings highlight the need for additional oversight. Yeah, regardless, the FBI should not have been censoring anything. It's a violation of civil liberties in the United States. So that's the executive summary. Let's take a look at what else is going on here. It says here, there were various components. There was a foreign influence task force created by Director Ray, led by Chief Laura Demlo, became the head of the organization. They had a San Francisco field office where we know Agent Elvis Chan worked. Here's one email. Elvis said, in response, he sent this email to Facebook. Elvis Chan, who censored pandemic and election stuff, says, you know, Facebook, I know I sound like a broken record over here, but can you ensure all Facebook referrals about foreign influence elections come through me? We've had some things fall through the cracks, and I want to make sure everyone's looped in. There were 63 legal attache offices known as legats around the world serving the FBI. Here's about Russian inf infiltration. They say the FBI's reliance on the SBU's information and judgment is alarming. We know that there was deep-rooted Russian influence in the SBU. In July, Zelensky fired the head of the SBU, months after the FBI had fulfilled their censorship requests. They give us some history about the collapse of the Soviet Union and the SBU. They say that Zelensky purged the SBU of Russian collaborators after they censored Americans. And the extent of Russian influence in the SBU today is unclear. All of the FBI's actions in this case occurred prior to Zelensky's removal of this guy, Banikov, Bakanov, from his top post. So saying simply here, the FBI worked with and on behalf of a foreign intelligence agency, widely known to be compromised by Moscow at the time, and indirectly and directly abetted efforts to censor Americans and their protected speech. So literally, FBI agents had the potential to render substantial aid to the Kremlin. Uh that's your FBI for you, man. They're like, yeah, sure. Putin's like texting, you know, he's like texting the SBU, I guess. I don't like this tweet, delete it. FBI's like, sure. It's just amazing. So uh, Congress reports it, says FBI censorship efforts went on in full effect. They sent Meta massive spreadsheets with thousands of accounts to remove. Here's one from Alexander. This one's coming from Kiev, Ukraine. I have a few more Instagram and Facebook accounts, according to the SBU, that spread Russian disinformation. For your review, 
an action is deemed appropriate. Does that sound like a Russian uh, agent on this email? Alexander Kobzinets spreading Russian disinformation? Probably not. Probably removing pro-Russian accounts because everybody who says anything, I would say that is even, not, you, you, unless you're like actively anti-Russian, then I guess you're a Putin apologist. It's really two worlds according to them. You're either anti, actively anti-Russian or you're a Putin apologist. It's like you can't live in those worlds. So if you're somebody who is challenging the standard narrative that we all must sacrifice everything for Ukraine or we all die, I would guess those are the stories, those are the tweets that they want removed. He sent two spreadsheets to his email. One spreadsheet had 16,000, 15,000 items. Instagram, Facebook post, reels, 5,000 Facebook accounts, spreading Russian disinformation. Here's the spreadsheet coming out of the SBU. Full lists. By cross-referencing the names with the flagged accounts, the committee verified many of the accounts labeled USA are authentic. They belong to real people. Many comments on this list are no longer accessible. Some of these accounts include a photographer, studio in New York, a manager, moving company, South Carolina, musician, vocalist, Minnesota, professor, University, California, a book author for kids books, Washington. Nice. Just removing people from their political conversations that they're absolutely legally entitled to have under the United States Constitution but they offered them legal cover to remove. This guy says, I work with Elvis Chan. Would you be able to tell me if these accounts or if you need some legal process from us? Can you just delete those things for us? The SBU requested the removal of a verified US State Department account and an American journalist. <laughs> <laughs> the security service of Ukraine, the FBI is like, oh sure, whatever you guys need. Ukraine, change our profile pictures. They say we've identified a number of Instagram accounts used in the interest of the aggressor country to distribute content that promotes war, inaccurately reflects events in the Ukraine, and justifies Russian war crimes in Ukraine in violation of international law, and used to assist the army of the aggressor country by transmitting information and movement of the forces, namely all of these accounts. So you your, your name just shows up on a list. Foreign government intelligence agencies monitoring what we talk about here, demanding that they be removed. Why would the Ukrainian government try to remove a US State Department verified Instagram account? They say, oh no, we didn't. We were infiltrated by Russia. Oh no, Russia, they infiltrated us. They're the ones responsible for removing harmful information against us. So the list of Instagram accounts included people who had self-styled socialist views. This guy, Agent Kobzinets, really laid SBU requests for months. In just one month, he sent the same employee at least 10 requests to consider removal. Here's another one. Here's another set of lists. They also removed stuff that was critical of Russia, the invasion and Vladimir Putin, and that were supportive of Ukraine. In a response to a post by the government, another post was in Russia. They removed that one. Looks like this one is posted here. LinkedIn posts are no longer available. So they also established a 24 seven channel to respond to the intelligence agency's request. Yeah, just send us a message anytime you need it. We'll take care of that for you. They also censored Google and YouTube. Amazing. We didn't get any Ukraine war strikes, but maybe we will for this video. First of all, thank you and your team for being so very responsive to the Ukraine request. After some convincing, I think the issue has been put to rest. They're focused on other important priorities. Let us know if you need anything from us, from the FBI. Submitting more and more requests, and it looks like they even created a form. So you could ask Google and YouTube to block specified channels. San Francisco, Elvis says, we got receipt. Thanks for letting us know. We'll remove those Putin apologists from our platforms. They also tried to censor people on Twitter. The uh, suspected accounts are suspected by Ukraine intelligence in spreading fear and disinformation. Look at this. <laughs> Yoel Roth, the head of Twitter, said, no, it's a, it's a mis mix of individual accounts, even includes journalists. So we're not removing all those people. All right, so you can see. They say, in enabling a compromise, foreign intelligence agencies request to censor Americans. The FBI never once noted in documents about what they've done here. They never told social media companies to disregard certain requests. And the FBI in general is not permitted to demand censorship. To make matters worse, no one at the FBI raised any concerns about Russia and their influence over the SBU. Instead, the FBI seems to have endorsed their censorship requests and routinely referred them out. They're like, we love what you're doing here. Yeah, remove it. The FBI even followed up with the platforms when there was inadequate responses. And so this report details misconduct by the FBI that is unconstitutional. It is also counterproductive to the aims of the Biden administration, which is to support Ukraine. They say it's all about democracy and Western civilization. Meanwhile, they're censoring people who object to endless war.
war. The FBI's conflation of domestic speech with foreign malign influence poses a grave threat to America and our civil liberties. As exposed by the testimony of various whistleblowers, the FBI's propensity to misconduct knows no limits. This is not the first time the government has tried to do this stuff. And whenever an executive branch agency is empowered by Congress, we have the right to oversight. They conclude saying, efforts to counter this foreign disinformation have noble intentions, but the government censorship of domestic speech cannot and should not be accepted as collateral in a perpetual war against influence. In order to better inform, we're going to continue to investigate what the FBI has done and how they are censoring Americans. And so it's like, why am I not surprised? It's a horrific thing that the FBI does this. It's even more of a horrific thing that the FBI is just taking orders from foreign intelligence. Uh, would you like fries with that removal? Yeah. Okay, great. Pull around to the front window. We'll have them taken down by then nonstop. And the fact that they are doing it and they don't even feel badly about it. They just are continuing to fight for more power and appealing the judge's order that said they had to stop this stuff means that this is their new strategy for the future. They don't want to combat anybody in the arena of ideas. They'd rather just use the strong arm of the government to remove you from the field. And when they're asked about it, when Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor, is asked a very important question on this, is this like the new protocol? Jake, is this what you guys are up to? Here's what he says. I have not seen that report. All I will tell you is that the United States and the Biden administration strongly support press freedom, media freedom, and uh, would support no steps that would be taken to undermine that. Oh, all right. That's another Oxford answer, everybody. Haven't seen it. Can't comment on it. But you know us. We stand for press freedom and free speech in America. We all know that's hogwash. My friends, there will be more censorship. There will be more FBI collusion, probably with more other entities, maybe even with Ukraine still, to continue to censor us. We will continue to cover it. Thank you for joining us as we do. And by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell, you'll make sure that you don't miss the next one. And we'll look forward to seeing you there.